Intelligence testing finds its origins in the late 1800s in the work of James Cattell at the University of Pennsylvania. After founding a psychology lab at Penn, Cattell began testing mental processing speed, eventually becoming interested in finding a way to quantify and classify students' actual mental abilities. He believed that having this capability would allow educators to discover which students were gifted and which were disadvantaged, in order that their particular needs could be addressed, and also to determine the best way to implement curriculum for other students. To this end, he created a series of what he dubbed mental tests, based in part on the work of his mentor, Sir Francis Galton, who had devised anthropomorphic tests to evaluate sensory, cognitive, and motor ability. In this period, mental ability was believed to derive from sensory input. That is, all knowledge of the world first had to pass through the senses, so the better one's perceptual abilities, the better one's mental abilities. Cattell's tests were therefore designed around testing sensory and physical acuity on the belief that this would identify students with superior mental ability. His test consisted of ten parts. He tested the ability to distinguish the difference between weights. He tested the threshold at which pressure causes pain. Borrowing from Ernst Weber, he tested the two-point threshold, the distance part at which two points of pressure can be distinguished. Using a dynamometer, he tested grip strength. He tested reaction time to sound. He tested the movement speed of the subject's arm. He tested how quickly the subject could name colors. He tested the ability to judge the bisection of a 50 centimeter line. He tested the number of letters a subject could hold in memory. He tested the ability to judge the passage of 10 seconds. Some of these tests are strictly physical, but many have a cognitive aspect. In 1894, Cattell received permission from the university to begin testing all incoming students, which he did for nearly 10 years. However, he had no real use for the data at that point. It would be his mentor, Galton, who would provide the means to make use of the data by the creation of the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient is a, is a statistical value that describes the degree to which one variable affects another. With the assistance of Clark Whistler, one of his grad students, Cattell applied Galton's statistical analysis to the data he'd collected to see if there was a relationship, a correlation, between the student scores on his tests and their subsequent performance academically. He expected that there would be a strong correlation, that higher scores on his tests would correlate with superior academic performance. Instead, he found the exact opposite. There was no correlation. His tests did not predict academic performance, which placed his whole theory in doubt. Soon after this, Cattell left experimental psychology and his tests were abandoned. However, mental testing did not disappear entirely. In 1908, French psychologist Alfred Binet devised a test that proved to be predictive of student performance. Originally designed to quantify the abilities of retarded children, Binet hoped it could be used to evaluate the abilities of normal children as well. The test consisted of a series of increasingly difficult tasks. The result of the test would define the mental age of the subject. When compared to the physical age of the subject, a ratio was calculated. When American psychologist Henry Goddard was looking for a way to test retarded children for similar reasons, he made use of the Spinet-Simon test, using it to standardize the existing categories of retardation. Shortly thereafter, Lewis Terman, among others, adapted the test while working at Stanford University, renaming it the stanford Binet Intelligence Test. He introduced the intelligence quotient, or IQ, which was simply a re-expression of the ratio between mental and physical age. This test became a standard for intelligence testing for the next 30 years. In 1917, the test was adapted again. Until this time, the test was administered only to an individuals. With the First World War, the Army wanted a method of testing groups of soldiers. Terman, Goddard, and others modify the test to allow testing of large groups, creating the Army Alpha and Army Beta tests, Alpha for literate and Beta for illiterate subjects. Thirty years later, David Wessler devised a new test that worked somewhat differently. First, he did away with the quotient scores of older intelligence tests and assigned an arbitrary value of 100 to the mean intelligence. From this, he added or subtracted another 15 points for each standard deviation above or below the mean the subject was. He divided the concept of intelligence into two main areas, verbal and performance. 
each further subdivided and tested with a different subtest. The Wessler scales are still in use today.